French Guyana, December 10, 1999. The seconds tick away to blast off of the latest mission of the European Space Agency celebrating its 25th anniversary. A massive Ariane 5 rocket lifts into orbit the world's most advanced X-ray telescope. It's called Newton, after the famous 18th century British scientist. Three British-built cameras on board will spend at least two years capturing invisible rays from distant galaxies trying to shed light on the violent origin of the universe and its future. They'll help answer several questions. One is of fundamental importance, and that is, where did we come from? The iron in our blood, the carbon in our bones, was actually fabricated in the center of stars, and these stars exploded in supernova. Newton will be able to tell us about the origin of the elements. Some of the first X-ray images of exploding stars and black holes have already started streaming back to Earth, free of the dust that obscures pictures from even the best optical telescopes. The mission is the latest part of the science program of the European Space Agency, a collaboration of 14 countries to fund research in space. The agency was set up in 1975 to promote European cooperation in space research for solely peaceful purposes and help develop advanced technology in Europe. Joint funding made feasible space exploration programs that no single country could afford. All 14 countries contribute to the agency's central funds according to the size of their GDP. This finances the major scientific missions like Newton. Canada also participates in some programs, and there is collaboration with the American space agency NASA on others. The Hubble Space Telescope, which has been keeping a steady eye on the stars from 600 kilometers above the Earth for the last decade, is an example of just such collaboration. Often thought of as an American venture, the Hubble carries an ESA-built camera. In return, 15% of the time given to observation goes to European astronomers. This is just one of the space-based observatories ESA is involved with. Five years after Ulysses became the first spacecraft to fly over the sun's poles, SOHO was launched in 1995. Sitting between the Earth and the sun, the SOHO spacecraft has been sending back pictures of the sun's atmosphere in visible and ultraviolet light. Transatlantic cooperation also extends to space shuttle missions. Since 1993, the shuttle has been regularly carrying up into space a special ESA-built space laboratory called Space Lab. Astronauts and scientists have been able to undertake a range of experiments on weightlessness or microgravity. From 1978 onwards, the ESA has been involved in building and launching communication satellites, now in day-to-day -day use for television and telecommunications. Some of the early launches, though, were spectacular failures. Yet this did not stop the rapid development of a satellite market. This is the latest in satellite technology. Using a new laser link system, the Artemis satellite is designed to handle both communications and navigation data. Satellites are a big growth area within ESA, but they don't come under the centrally funded science programs. ESA members can decide to join in or not in the development of satellite programs for communication or Earth observation. Climate change, pollution and environmental threats like these fires in Southeast Asia are best monitored from space. ENVISAT is the latest ESA satellite for monitoring and measuring changes in the Earth's oceans, land surface, ice caps and atmosphere. ESA's Earth Observation Centre near Rome handles data from over 20 satellites. The agency spends most of its budget on contracts awarded to technology and science-based companies in member states. It's a big incentive for member states to get involved in projects like Earth observation and communications. The International Space Station is the size of a modern football stadium. Ten ESA members collaborated on the project. The agency's main contribution, building a ferry vehicle, which when launched, took up food and other supplies to the astronauts manning the station. 
ESA also built a microgravity laboratory called Columbus, the successor to Spacelab. Like all space agencies, ESA has known disaster as well as triumph. The loss of the Ariane 5 rocket in 1996 and the scientific mission it was carrying was spectacular. But Cluster, a mission to monitor the sun's effects on the Earth's magnetic field, has been revived and is due to blast off again. Mars, the red planet of science fiction. A lifeless desert, or is it? Is there water under this dusty, rocky surface? Soon we may have the answer if the ESA Mars Express lander can probe deep enough. The European Space Agency is about to decide on the next generation of scientific missions, a crucial decision as all members will be committed to what could be long and costly projects. One is expected to be a mission to Mercury, the hottest planet, being closest to the Sun. The other mission which the European Space Agency will consider is called GEAR. And this is designed to measure accurately the positions of a billion stars. By monitoring the positions of stars with unprecedented accuracy, Scientists hope the mission will show them how the Milky Way, our galaxy, was formed. With these two missions being considered, others are already airborne. The Cassini spacecraft is flying towards Saturn, carrying a European Space Agency probe which will explore one of that planet's moons. The twin aims of the European Space Agency as it enters its next quarter century are theoretical and practical.